to look, dude. Don't bother explaining to me what, what, this is, what these people are doing. Because right now they're finding loopholes in paperwork, and they're saying, look, they can go out and they can do wrong because there's no thing in paperwork that says they can't do what they're doing. Eventually the paperwork will catch up to them, and eventually somebody will create statutes, create a little paper law that says that if they do try to create warrants behind your back and try to use your name and try to do this, that they're going to be held liable. But until then, they're running hard wild, and they know what they're doing is wrong. They know in their heart it's wrong, but they're doing it anyway until somebody comes in along in society and creates a piece of paper and stops them from doing wrong. I'm not trying to teach people, look for the loopholes. Look how you do wrong and laugh about it. Make a mockery of this. Make, make them make documents 10 miles high that we basically can't blink, that we do anything because we can't self-control ourselves. So they got to create paperwork and rules and regulations to create every kind of way to limit our ability because we're not honorable people. They will. They will create a government that will inundate us with so much nonsense that it'll, it'll be mind-numbing. Because, I don't want that. Yeah, I don't I want that. Warrants with the name, with people's names on them, that are being utilized without knowledge, people come back you, and with yeah. liability for it. Right. You know, you know, and I know that's wrong. But right now, there's nothing. There's nothing in writing that says they can't do what they're doing, and they're just running hog wild. They think it's funny. Just like all the bankers did. Just like the femas did. Just like all those people did. But any kind of. Uh, just like any, just like any kind of Halliburton, just like any kind of uh, uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all the mortgage brokers knew to say, hey, look, hey, hey, lady, lady, you want a half a million dollar house? She's like, I work at Walmart. I make five dollars an hour. I can't afford. Oh yes, you can. Look, there's no paperwork that says you can't get this house. It's just, just, just put that down. Just put. It. Am I going to get in trouble for putting it down? No, you ain't going to put it down. Why? Because there's no law that says you can't lie on this piece of paperwork. Well, that's a lie. Well, you're not breaking the law because there's no law that says that you can be held liable for lying. So go ahead and put it down. You want that $100,000 million dollar house? Yeah. So we'll say you make a million dollars a year. You ain't going to get in trouble? No. Nah. Why? Because there's no law that you can't do it. So do it. Well, you can get away with it. There has to be a law that says that you can't lie. Not because, because nobody would have signed that stuff. They're like, you're kidding me. Okay, tell me, tell me how many people are in jail. Tell me how many people are in jail from, from, from fudging on their mortgage application. Tell me. Tell me how many people, how many mass Not suites. one. Not a single, not a single man, or woman is sitting in jail because they fibbed a little bit on their mortgage, on their mortgage application. Well, the people doing the mortgage, the mortgage paperwork are, are, are who, 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 who signed it? The man or woman who got the mortgage, didn't they? They, they fibbed. And they they knew they last to endorse it, whoever can possibly. It doesn't matter, man. Man, if somebody tried to get me to sign a piece of paper, say, come on, call, just say you make an extra penny a year, just one penny, that way you get a free million dollar house. I was like, no, that's fraud. I, it's, it's going to catch me in the end. It's going to bite me in the end. I know it's wrong. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to get involved. Something's wrong here. Something stinks. Something's going to collapse. This, this can't be. This can't work. If everybody's doing it. What about a million dollar house? What about a million dollar house? Too big to clean, in my opinion. Okay, I can't really hear with the kid in the background. That's all right, man. But like I said, all I'm trying to basically say is if you know it's wrong, it's wrong. It just don't have to do it. And then when it all blows up in your face and says, there's no way in the world we could, we could afford a million dollar house. And you think, how much money were you making? Because everybody knows who, when, when we bought houses back in the 70s and the 60s, the bank manager would go talk to your boss, he'd go talk to your neighbors, he'd go talk, if you became uh, part of the Rotary Club or Fire Department, involved, he'd go talk to the people that you associated with, he'd talk to your friends, and he'd find out, are you going to pay the money back? That's what he would do back in the 60s and back in the 70s. And then he would not give you a loan. If you made thirty thousand dollars a year, he would not give you a loan for more than sixty thousand dollars. He would not do it because fifty percent of you, uh, if you made thirty thousand, he'd only give you six thousand dollars loan because that means there's only ten fifteen percent of your income that's supposed to go paying towards the mortgage, not fifty percent, not sixty percent, not seventy percent. So people didn't want to know the rules of how to borrow money, and they just said, "Hey, you know what? We could borrow a million dollars, right?" Oh, wow, really? <laughs> Uh, how are you going to pay it back? You make ten thousand a year. Oh, don't worry about it. The, the guy said, uh, uh, you know, the real estate never goes down. Houses always go up, and, and everything's always unicorns, lollipops, roses, and sunshine. And you believe them? Yeah, really. And you don't think it was too good to be true? Well, I saw all the people on TV in those little mini commercials. Look, we you get become a billionaire in real estate in thirty seconds or less. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's jumping off the building. Everybody's smoking dope. Everybody's doing LSD. Woohoo! Join the club. You don't want to be left behind. What, are you kidding me? 
<laughs> this is retarded. This is ridiculous. She's not ever saved my life. Do you guys have any idea how finance works? You're overextending yourself. You're never going to be able to pay the debt that's due. Are uh, you out of your effing mind? Now, there you go. Why don't, why don't somebody Google me and see if Carl Lentz ever filed my mortgage? Tell me you don't think I knew what was going on back then, that anybody could get an effing mortgage. I, went, I was doing satellite installs. It was funny, man. I went into this house and it was full of Ugandans. And they were all wearing their tribal dress. It was so funny. And I said, um, and one woman spoke English. And I was looking at one of these creepy truth satellites because they wanted to get over the Canary Islands. If you don't know, it's off the coast of Africa. That's where their satellite was floating around. The whole freaking neighborhood, that part of Atlanta is like down in the Forest Park area, Henry County. If anybody lives in Henry County, Forest Park area, they'll tell you. There's a whole suburb that were full of like Nicaraguans and Ugandans that is probably desolate now because every single freaking home was like sold. There was like, like a thousand freaking homes to these Africans. They didn't speak freaking English. So if we were part of the satellite, so they could listen to their native language, their native programming. I went in the house and I said to the lady, uh, what's all these guys doing here? And I said, oh, they, well, they're just my brothers and cousins and that's What are they doing here? Are they working? No. So what are they doing? Oh, they're just enjoying America for a year or two. What do you mean for a year or two? Well, the real estate guy told us in a year or two the economy is going to collapse and uh, all the houses are going to be taken away, but we're going to just sit here and squat in these buildings and... Uh, Every year we get $100,000 for the next two or three years. So what do you mean $100,000? Oh, they're going to refinance these homes for us. They're going to do what? Yeah, they sold us this house for three hundred, and they told us next year it's going to be worth four hundred, five hundred, and they'll give us half of whatever it's worth. If it goes up to four hundred, they'll give us $50,000, and that's what we're living off of for the next year. If it's worth $500,000, they'll, they'll share $100,000 with us. I said, you shit me, lady. She said, no, I shit you not. So they said it might go up to about eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000, and then they're going to ship us all back home because we're not going to be able to afford to stay here because this is how we're getting our money. I called to my sister after that. I said, sell your house. This is like 2003, 2004. I said, sell your house and get the hell down to mom's house. I said, of course, her house was like uh, ridiculous. I think it was like, uh, when it was built, it was probably like 10, 20 grand, but she lived down to Hampton. So it was worth like five, six hundred thousand dollars. I said, sell that thing and run like hell. Get down to mom's house, hold on to your money and don't blink. But I said, the economy's going to collapse. I said, I'm just calling her a family gun and this is insane what's going on here. I've been putting a holy satellite dishes and all, but now I understand why. Some lady finally explained it to me. I don't know what you've got, and I know Nicaragua, and then they could be able to tell me basic, simple things. I'd say like channel three, and go like my finger, like three, three, somebody want to sign this? And they'd sign it as a cop. You know, how are they going to pay for this thing? And the lady finally explained to me how they're going to pay for all this. That's not how you guys pay for all this shit. None of you going to work. Oh, we're going to refinance the house. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, every year it's worth more. And what? They're going to give you money? Yeah, they're going to give us money. Is that where you got like that nice Cadillac Escalade out there? Oh, yeah, last year they gave us 100 grand. We bought a Cadillac Escalade. So how are you going to get it back to Africa? We're not. We're just going to leave it here. You're kidding me. No, we're just going to enjoy America for a couple of years and we want to hell home. <laughs> I said, okay. This sounds like a plan. You don't think I could have jumped on a boat and said, hey, get me hooked up with a free house? Of course I could have. I said, no, some something's rotten in Denmark. I called my family and said, stop whatever the hell you're buying, get the hell out of there, sell whatever you got, and run to mom's farm. Because some shit's going to hit the fan in a couple of years. And my sister sold her house in 2007. She got like 400 something thousand dollars. And the economy collapsed in 2007, 2008, and I guarantee you they couldn't get 50 grand for that house she sold. Look at, look at the housing prices here in the county I live in, Rockbridge County. Google it. If the median household price in 2007 was being sold for like 400 some thousand dollars, man. The last year, I think, it was 42 or $43,000, the average house, because that obviously a lot of houses were being sold close to mortgage on. It's ridiculous what happened. But don't tell me that you guys didn't watch those silly commercials at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, everybody could be a billionaire in 30 seconds or less. And realize, wait a second, these morons who are doing this, they're, they're freaking morons. I want to trust this kid to babysit my kids. This, this, guy, this guy's a creep. Thank you.